I've never seen Seb as a, a professional cyclist. Yeah, in front of Seb's house. Yay! 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 Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having us. No problem. I'm Really nice talking to you, Mark. Thanks, man. Yes, guys, here we are in Andorra. Today, I'm not cycling in any of these big mountain days around, but I'm happy because we're gonna meet the guy that probably owns the most KOMs of the country, the American Sepp Kuz. We're gonna go to his house right now and meet also his wife. They live here around the corner. And like I said, we are in Andorra. Where is Andorra for those who wonder? It's a little country between France and Spain in the heart of the Pyrenees that is also the home of many professional cyclists. There's in total 86 World Tour cyclists living here, like the Brothers Yates, also Alaphilippe, uh, guys like uh, the cyclists from Ineos, and for sure, Sepp Kuz. So let's go to his house and talk a little bit with him and his wife. Yeah, in front of Sepp's house. Let's see. Hey, Marta, I'm going to go. Vale, Noe. Yeah. Yay! Hey, Marta, I'm going to go. Hey, So, this is Bimba, but first of all, this is Noe. Thanks for coming us. Hey! Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, the first time I see you in person. Long time, long time. Yeah, thanks for having us. No problem. I'm welcome, welcome. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of coffee. That's, that's, oh is it a scene that in, in, in the cycling peloton? Not no, too, no, I, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of teammates that don't, don't drink coffee. Yeah, I'm gonna go no? for, yeah, some, yeah, some cola cow. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, her every, that's her everyday recipe is uh, the cola cow with uh, Nescafe and... Uh... So who are the guys that, because actually sometimes when I go for a, for a bike ride and yeah. the waiter comes and I'm surrounded by all my friends yeah, that they yeah. are cyclists and they ask me, do you want to... Do you want a coffee? And I will say, no, because I don't like it. I feel like a shame. Yeah, no. So who is the, the, the top guys that don't like coffee? Top cyclists um, that they don't I don't know. Drink on, on our team, Tom Glog, he, he doesn't drink coffee. Okay. Yeah, he drinks it sometimes, but but not like in the in the mornings. Some guys that drink tea in the morning, but or some guys that just have it, you know, uh, every once in a while, but they're not like like me where I need to start the day with uh, with coffee. But I think so. most cyclists, most professional cyclists like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but al also yeah. some are really particular with everything and weighing the beads and then I just really? have normal <laughs> normal drip coffee and, and I, I like good coffee, but I can also drink bad coffee and, and it's more or less the same for me. <laughs> I just saw Attila because when we were coming to your house uh -huh. here in Andorra, there's, there's a lot of cyclists living here yeah, and yeah. we just ran into several. A couple guys from Education First, mm -hmm. and we just saw Attila. In Andorra, it's like a small country, mm -hmm. so I get you, you run into your rivals and teammates all the time. How, how yeah, it, it depends. I mean, there, there's a lot of times a year where, where everybody's, you know, at, at a race or somewhere else, and, and but um, no, it's, it's surprisingly peaceful, you know. it's I like it not to run into too many people because then it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> more quiet. Because <laughs> how long have you been living guys here in, in Andorra? It's been, it's been a while, because you met in Andorra. Yeah, five, five years, yeah. 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 But you met each other in Andorra, if I'm not yeah. wrong. Yeah. And the thing that, that now we're going to talk about how a little bit how you met, guys. But when we park in front of your house, yeah. I was climbing towards your house because it's in, in, yeah. in, in a little climb that they see in Andorra. And I was like, no, that's not real. The terrace you've got here, you've got views yeah. Yeah, yeah. to the climb uh -huh. that you actually won on the stage in the Tour de France. Yeah, yeah. So to... Just by coincidence, yeah. But that's great. Yeah, yeah. Every day when you wake up, you just have the best motivation. Good morning. Oh, it's raining. Oh, I've got Bechali here where I made history. Yeah, yeah, Is that, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Moving into our, our, our first home together and then winning the stage and then having the, the views and, and everything. So always nice memories too, because if I... If I start my ride, sometimes I'll just start straight up Bechalis and, and, and from this side, it's it's really steep and hard. It's a nice warm up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's always easier going up it when I know, you know, what, what happened there uh, a few years ago. And uh, yeah. right. it's, it's nice when you can relive those those moments. So you guys met here in Andorra also by chance or 
Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's go there. I'll, I'll explain yeah. the story. Here's your... My colacao. Powder, whatever you want. <laughs> and this is a cake that you bake? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it your favorite one or...? Yeah, we, we, we always make a variation of like... Uh, okay. You you scotch, you know, like uh, this one, what, chocolate chips, some nuts. Chocolate, nuts. So it's banana? Chia seeds. No, not banana. Yogurt. Walnuts. Yogurt. Like the normal uh, Spanish yogurt recipe. Oh, Mom's recipe. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> after uh, after the queen stage of La Vuelta, you met each other. Uh, which stage? I think it was the yeah, ninth stage. Was like stage nine. Yeah. It was before he won. Yeah, it was it was stage eight or nine, I think. Okay, so I was here training, and I was at the at the village. I was with a group of friends that were training here, and and they had friends in the peloton. I didn't know. I didn't know many people. And then yeah, one of my friends said hi to one of his teammates, and then Seth came down, and then. We just kind of not even we didn't really even talk you know just, just a bit yeah not, just yeah, just uh like friendly <laughs> small talk and then <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. but there was like so like before the race nerves i was like yeah okay yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. no, but, uh, was, cute, but, but like, was there that. something in in that like little look was like like a little like yeah 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 and um but yeah it, the, the race started you know he was really focused i was with my friend so why we left you, you finished the Volta, you were here, and then you followed me on Instagram. and Yeah, yeah. And then we started travel. talking more and meeting up, and then yeah. from then it was... Uh, yeah. <laughs> then we so like, it was a done deal. So then you started cycling <laughs> together? Or you just met yeah. for, yeah, for yeah. going to um, like a coffee? We, we together the second Yeah, after, after a few, a few normal days. dates, then we then we did some rides together. And, yeah. um, and then we yeah. started spending time together. Like, yeah, yeah, non non stop. Yeah, yeah, non yeah. Stop. whenever we could. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's funny when, when there's like a couple that is one, one is from one country and the other one is from another. In this case, is yeah, you're from yeah. America, and Noah from Spain. And yeah. It's like, who's the converted? Because well, you I live mean, in neutral country. Like, you live in Andorra, so it's not state, it's not Spain. So, yeah, who's the converted, yeah. Seth? Yeah, well, I, w I would say me, I, I, I converted, uh, yeah, culturally to, to live here. And, and luckily, I, I have my. My Catalan family, which is <laughs> which is my extended family, Noemi's family, and um, yeah, that that helps a lot to just make uh, make Andorra or or Catalonia, wherever I am in Europe, feel feel like home. Yeah, because between the two of you, you speak in because you speak Spanish as well, mm -hmm. but between the two of you, you speak uh, you speak English since yeah. day one. Yeah, yeah, yeah since day one. Because yeah. when we met, his Spanish wasn't that good. Yeah, it was like more. It was very no, basic. Same, same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ever since we met, her level of English was was completely fluent. So, yeah, that was that was the way we we started, you know, expressing ourselves, and and it's just the most natural way for us. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then to the dog, to B Bimba. Mm -hmm. Which language do you speak? Is it a, is it a bilingual dog? No, she speaks Catalan. <laughs> yeah, she speaks Catalan. She speaks Catalan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if I say All sit, the... she doesn't understand no. me. No, so you have to say sale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good way good. for me. All yeah. the all the, the basics. <laughs> so then, Seth practice Catalan with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's actually the only person, <laughs> the only that. person that you. you yeah, yeah. To, exactly. To so I'm gonna try this. Yeah, it's okay. It's good. Mm -hmm. Let's see now if I can move. <laughs> seven watts kilo. So. <laughs> Definitely helps. This is what Seth has most days. Like you cannot wake up. If we don't have cake or cookies or something. When now in winter, for example, when you're training, you wake up in the morning and mm -hmm. you go for a ride in the morning. Mm -hmm. What do you eat now in winter? Yeah, some like a uh, couple pieces of toast with with egg and um, some some oats or something, or sometimes pancakes or French toast. Pretty pretty okay. flexible. Something we were speaking yesterday with with Noah by phone is like, oh, because because you know I studied sex psychology, mm -hmm. and I was like thinking. Yeah, in professional cycling, one of the big things is the pressure, how to handle mm -hmm. pressure. And I feel with you, and, and as a professional, no, I can give us <laughs> a point of view. I mean, maybe from inside it's different, but you don't feel like the pressure some other people feel. Not just the pressure on the races, also the, the pressure of training like every day, mm -hmm. being fit. So for you, it, it, it seems like from the outside, eh? I know that once you, you are inside behind closed doors is another story mm -hmm. and then you know the problems or you know the struggles. But from outside, it seems that you just like have fun, like cycling and it's, it's like, okay, I've got six hours. Yeah, so I'm going to play with my bike six hours. Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> so after Pogi, after Pogacar, that it feels the guy that 
is competing in the Tour de France and feels like he's racing against his friends on a Sunday ride after Poggy, this feeling of enjoying cycling, you come after for me. Mm -hmm. How is leaving the pressure in a top team like Visma where you're fighting for big goals like Tour de France and also mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I have fun cycling, but at the end of the day, you know that you have to be on the 1st of July, like fit to support Jonas or in La Vuelta España, fit mm -hmm. to be a contender and win the, the race. Is that sometimes hard to handle psychologically or is it not a big deal for you? No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not that it's not something I think about, but um, yeah, for me, I only feel pressure from, from myself. You know, I never feel it from, from the team. I know that, um, yeah, of course they, they want the best from me, but they don't expect, uh, anything that's, that's beyond what I can do. So, um, yeah, if, if I ever feel pressure, it's just, uh, yeah, from myself wanting to, to not achieve a certain result, but, but get, get the maximum out of myself. Um, But for these these big goals like like the Tour, the Vuelta, the Grand Tours, um, those are the races I feel the least pressure for because I know that I'm at my best for those races, and I don't feel like there's anything else to to show or prove. Um, there's there's no ground to make up because I know if I if I do my best in in training, then whatever's meant to be in the race will will come to a fruition. There's always, always difficult moments. There's no, there's no rider that has no problems or no mental, um, difficulties or second thoughts, uh, negative thoughts, whatever. But, um, yeah, for me, the most important thing is just doing what's, what's in my control, uh, enjoying my, my, my work and, um, and then seeing what, what happens in the, in the race, whether, whether good or bad. <laughs> And do you feel that he has to be like a cyclist 24-7 no. in normal life? Or? I've never seen Seb as a, I mean, as a professional cyclist. Um, he, is very, he is very committed to his, like, he would never miss a training or anything. But other than that, uh, I have friends that are cyclists and they are a lot more uh, focused, like they are strict at all times with their life. Like everything, oh no, I can't do this after training because I need to be resting and I need to eat this and that. For him, it's not like this. I think it's because, I mean, you really enjoy riding and you're good, you're super talented. So you don't have to put that extra effort to get to a good point for you. As long as you can ride your bike, do the training that you, mm -hmm. that you do and get the hours in, he's, he's good. So you don't, have, um, you don't have to commit beyond that. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't go partying or anything. We have a normal life, but um, you don't have to be focused um, like at all times. Okay, so now that... People know a little bit about Sepp and Noe. Mm -hmm. Let's ask some, some little questions about yeah, the <laughs> daily life living. A little quiz, I think you say it in, yeah, in English. Yeah. So which kind of, of, of cyclist she is? Because more like explosive on the climbs, more of like a No, like long, long climbs, yeah. Similar, like similar to me, yeah. Almost okay. the same But I didn't characteristics. Like such, I didn't like such a, he likes very steep climbs. Yeah. I liked steep climbs, but he likes like 10, 15%. Yeah. I like more 8%. And eight you don't like the downhills either, and I, I like downhills. That. I'm really bad at downhills. <laughs> Is there any film series you, you just like to watch together? Like one favorite film or one favorite series? We, are, we, were, we, we, we were Grey's series. Anatomy for a while. Sometimes we go through a phase where we, yeah, we can't find it. anything good, and then we just watch like some garbage show. <laughs> yeah. For a while, and then we find something, and you get hooked. But um, if I ask to each other, like your no favorite like series or, or film, Grey's Anatomy has always been my okay. favorite show. And movies, I like uh, kind of romances, like Fell Harbor. And oh, Fell no. Harbor! It's so lockdown, good. In the lockdown, I, I I made him watch Fell Harbor, Titanic, um, all these like super. <laughs> movies, yeah. yeah, yeah. And for you, you like, yeah, mine are more like darker side like like breaking bad mm. uh true detective fargo psychological like thrillers yeah. or um yeah one movie like i like no country for old men like kind of also kind of dark and yeah. uh, moody which style of music do you listen do you listen country for example because i'm a bit yeah, I, I like country. country music yeah yeah I, i i haven't listened to sometimes i i put on country you know if i'm writing and i just turn it on the phone and put it on the, on the speaker, but 
Yeah, we like reggaeton and yeah. uh, hey. you know, just just whatever is on the. Just we're not too picky, really. We're not picky. For me, I've never been picky with music. I like yeah. whatever is commercial at the time. Um, yeah, yeah, we like reggaeton, but not not so much lately. We had a couple few years that it was like just reggaeton all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> In the car, everything. But, yeah. Uh, depends on the mood. Yeah, yeah. It depends. Now we have some chill playlists, yeah. and it depends on the mood. Yeah. yeah. What about other sports? Apart from cycling, I guess you don't have much time now, Seb, because you're a professional cyclist, but which would you say is another sport you guys like? Uh, together, we like hiking. We like hiking. Well, you, you more than me. I, I come on the, the occasional hiking. hike. Yeah, a bit of running, but I'm not like a super dedicated or consistent runner, so it's more in the, in the off-season just to, just to exercise. Yeah. Then what about uh, places? Uh, is there like a favorite holiday destination? For you that you've been or that you'd want to go i don't know for me like when we went to menorca yeah, last year that was that was, was really cool yeah the year before we had gone to maldives it was our mm -hmm. honeymoon but that was too relaxing like you had nothing to do there in a place like <laughs> menorca you get you know you you go to the beach in the morning then you go for a walk in the afternoon nice restaurants yeah, yeah. i think for us it's important that there's good restaurants yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, the, most that's the most important. <laughs> yeah. Which kind of food is your favorite food or one of your favorite um, food? It's funny because before, for both of us, it was meat. Like, we would only choose restaurants based on the oh, steaks yeah. that they had. And now, for me, I like kind of everything. Yeah, just, a bit just of a, Mediterranean food. food. Yeah, Mediterranean. I, I think for me, the food, like, I, I really like the Mediterranean food and, and everything, but I think for me, the food I always miss the most is Mexican food. And that's why I always say, oh, we need to go to Mexico because yeah, yeah. not only just go to Mexico, but, but to eat like really authentic Mexican food. So then your speciality, is there any food that is like, oh, I just make that and is, there's no restaurant in the world that they can match this piece Ooh. of meat or whatever they do, like barbecue, I don't know. Um, yeah, my Mexican food is, I mean, it's, it's not like really authentic style, but it, for, for my, my skill level or from what I've learned, it's well, it's it's good enough really and for you know it which is the i think my best um my best recipe is the paella not paella, paella itself it's um kind of like a more gooey paella just not like the the super dry like arroz malos so that's the cycling the most cycling part of the mm -hmm. of the interview but i think i should change the name and i should say it the most comfiest part of, <laughs> of the interview. I've never been so comfy. Yeah, yeah. not <laughs> a bad spot. <laughs> the interview. And yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, yeah this season and also yeah some questions about last Vuelta España because one thing that I've been... So some, some people that they know that I know you, in the last two, three years, they were asking me, is Seb going to win a Grand Tour one day? Do you think Seb has a GC, a GC on, on his legs? And I was like, of course, mm -hmm. I, I have some information and talking to you in the recent years, I just talked about that to you and you were like, oh, no, I'm, a, I'm a, like super domestic. I don't have any aim on, on winning a GC and all in a sudden you win a GC. Mm -hmm. And other people I told, no, Seb is happy in, in his role. And now you just won the, the GC. So yeah. you just broke every, <laughs> every all the odds. Yeah. So did you really believe you had a, a GC? Because you, you didn't tell me that like one year ago. Yeah, no, no, I never... I never really thought about it, actually. Um, it was only halfway through the Vuelta after um, after the time trial where I thought, OK, I, I think I, I have the, the legs to 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 win the race. Um, but before that, I never um, had any any thoughts about doing doing my own race or uh, yeah, going going for my own results. So. It was a surprise. <laughs> Cause, but the numbers, because sometimes you speak with, uh, with uh, coaches, trainers, and it's like, because you have to have numbers to win the, mm -hmm. uh, as you see, and they, they knew, I guess, you had numbers to be with the top guys on the climb, but does you have the consistency, mm -hmm. the, uh, the endurance for three weeks, mm -hmm. not miss any, any, any day? So how surprised was, was the team? Were they surprised or, or they knew that you could do such a thing like this? Um... Ah, it's it's hard to say. I mean, I think I think between the Giro, the Tour, and the and the yeah. Volta, all the numbers were were the same uh, in terms of the, the climbing performances. Um, but for sure, in the Volta, I, I had uh, you know I didn't really have any any bad days. Um, and then for me, the the big difference was was in the time trial because 
it was the first time trial I did where there was actually something to lose, where I actually had to to really um, push myself to the to the limit, which normally, yeah, maybe there's a top ten or something to think about, but you don't actually, uh, you know, push yourself. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was a big difference for me. And then once once that was done, it was just about being. Um, yeah, being really focused and sharp, which normally in other races, similar thing. There's there's nothing to gain by me being super focused the whole stage and being in front. I just sit in the back and and stay safe. Um, but yeah, it was also the first race where I had an actual need to be um, really on top of things every single day. So that was that was I think the, what the the team maybe was most surprised about. But winning La Vuelta did it change? A little bit like your mentality going forward and you think that now is something okay that I did it so maybe now I fancy it and is the team going to give you these opportunities yeah I mean I think it showed me now that that with with that same um, level of form I can I can fight for for the grand tours you know I can be with with the best guys and um Yeah, that, that gives me a lot of confidence, but it also gives me a lot of calm because, yeah, I've, I've already won the Vuelta. I'm, I'm really happy about that, but it's not something that I all of a sudden need to feel like I need to shift uh, who I am as a, as a rider or whatever to only focus on being a, a leader or whatever for the Grand Tours. But the, the team, they, they've realized what, what I can do now from, from the... From the Vuelta last year, and um, yeah, there's there's more opportunities, but um, at the same time, I'm not necessarily looking for uh, absolute leadership or anything like that. I think uh, in the end, it's really simple. If you, if you're strong enough, then then you will always have those opportunities automatically. So, because what's the goal? Like your main goal for this 2024? So um, the tour? Yeah, the tour and the and the Vuelta. It's it's uh, like a combination I've done quite a bit in the past, and and I know I can I can be really good in the tour, and and then straight away be really good or even better in the Vuelta. So um, you know I don't I don't think one has to uh, you know take priority over the other. I think I just want to be be really good in those those two races. One of the big things about this 2024 is Roglic leaving the team. He goes to, to Bora. Now, let's see now what mm -hmm. happened with Red Bull now in, in this mm -hmm. team. But did you expect that? Did you or the team expect it at the beginning of the season that Roglic could, could leave earlier? Um, yeah, I, I thought it was, you know, maybe something that he was, was thinking about. I mean, he, he wanted, the, you know, to have absolute leadership in, in the team uh maybe in, in the tour just knowing that that everything in the team was was around him and, and backing him to to help him win yeah the biggest races or, or the races that that he still wants to win um and yeah then then eventually it it, it turned out that he was going to leave um and yeah i think now he found that that environment that he that he needs to To go for the tour or for whatever whatever race he he wants to to target. One of the aims of Roglic is the Tour de France. Us, Jonas, and you. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a little bit the the route of? of yeah, the yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah. I I like it quite a bit. I think it's uh, yeah. It looks really hard, especially the the third week. A um, lot of yeah. If we compare it to this past year, a lot of longer climbs, more more uh, high mountains. So. Just just comparing the the profiles, I like it. Uh, Do you like yeah. it more than the last? Yeah, one? yeah. For you, for you and for because you and I guess you and, and Jonas, the kind of route you like is similar or or, or not? Because you both well, like I, I think long so. Climbs. Yeah, yeah, longer. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think this this past year was was pretty, um, let's say, explosive. Like uh, more or less easy stages with with a really really hard um, final climb. Um, and then I think this this next year's tour is more of a 
um, yeah, like real, a lot of really proper mountain days. Talking about Pogacar, he's doing the double this year, mm -hmm. Giro and Tour de France. I mean, you could give him some tips, but you're not going to do it. <laughs> but uh, what's the feeling you've got in, in the team? Because some people are saying, oh, he's doing Giro, so he's going to get to the two like uh, more tired. Uh, do you think that, I mean, do you understand this decision of Pogacar doing both Grand Tours, or do you think that's going to harm his chances of, of facing in his 100% Jonas in, in the Tour de France? How do you see it? No, I, I think I think it's, um, I mean, firstly for him, it's it's exciting because he he is always doing something different and, and exploring new races. So for him, it has to be has to be really motivating to do that. Um, and I think physically, I think, I don't think it will hurt him at all to do the Giro because if you think about it, it's like, It's like doing a three-week training camp. You, you have a massage every day. You eat well. You race. It's, uh, it's some of the best training you can have. So, um, yeah, if he, if he gets through the Giro well and they have um, more or less good weather um, and then, you know, you, you rest and train again for the Tour, then um, I, I imagine he'll be as good or, or even better than... Uh, if he if he just focused on the on the tour. Also, something that I I would be really interested in, in hearing your opinion is about American cycling. Because mm -hmm. do you think yeah you're doing really good these last years, but also guys like McNulty, guys like Jorgensen, do you think that can helps on bringing back like top American cyclists? Because in the last 10 years, in the last decade, it's been yeah not a lot of top cyclists in America. Mm -hmm. Now it's coming back again. Uh, Do you see it coming like top cyclists for the future after what you guys are achieving, especially you? Yeah, I, I think I think in terms of the the talent pool, there's there's a lot um, of of really young riders coming through. I mean, I'm pretty removed from uh, you know all the 16, 17 year olds that are coming up, but I'm sure they're really <laughs> super strong. And um, I think now there's there's a good reference point for a lot of young riders. Um, in the U.S. that see, okay, there's there's these guys, there's guys in the classics, there's guys in the Ardennes, there's guys in the Grand Tours. Um, so there's something for everybody. There's there's good, um, you know, role models or references, and you know they also see that that each one of us has kind of come through a different different pipeline into the into the sport or into the world tour, and that's also motivating because there's no one clear path. To, to become a professional if, if that's what you want to do with cycling. Um, but I think, you know, now in the U.S. there's no there's no tour of California, no Utah, Colorado. There's no real races where you can showcase your, your talent, which is what I was the most fortunate to have because I could race tour of California against a bunch of world tour teams, a tour of Utah, a tour of Colorado. Um, otherwise, I don't know how I would have been noticed by, by any, any team in Europe. Um, and now without those races, there's less of a, a platform for that. So I think it's a matter of, of just finding, finding something that, that brings uh, all the big teams to the U.S. It doesn't have to be anything super large scale, but just to start again um, with, with uh, you know, um, high-level races, road races in the U.S. So do you think it's one of the solutions, like, to introduce back again, like, top, like, professional, like, races? Yeah, I, I, it depends. I mean, I think it, you, need the, you need the whole structure because you also need uh, teams in the U.S. That are, that are also absorbing some of the talent that's coming through, from the U.S. Like, when, when I started, I was with, with Rally, which was now Human Powered Health, um, But now there's not so many U.S. teams even. So first you have to find a place for these riders to go that maybe aren't on the national team or whatever. And then you have to find the race for them to, to showcase themselves. Um, so it's, yeah, you kind of have to build up the whole system again. Um, so at, at this point, it's, it's only gravel races and, and showing potential in, in some Uh, ways outside of the, yeah, out of the box. 
but it's hard to say what uh, <laughs> yeah, what comes first, you know? So yeah, thanks for your time. I mean, it's always oh. nice to speak to you, but in your house with the views of this climb <laughs> that you just match everybody in the Tour de France is, <laughs> is even better. And thanks for, for having me. Really nice talking to you, Mark. Thanks, man. Well, Seb, the last thing I've, I've got for you is like, I brought you uh, a little special oh. jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, re I remember that color. <laughs> yeah, this right jersey. Very nice. Yeah. Can we sign these? Yeah, up? Let's, let's sign these. I've Looks got like two. Looks like there's room for a signature there. I guess you're an expert on doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we should, one more should corner. I, okay, let's see. It's not the first time, eh? <laughs> Amazing. There we go. Okay. The Volta España red jersey signed by the last winner of the Volta España. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for everything. It's been such a pleasure. And I Thank think you guys. This is the best way to finish the video. Thank you, Noe, for, as well for, for having us.